you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where obvious answers mean nothing and obscure answers mean everything. Let's meet today's players. Well, first we welcome Dean and Nicola. You're our first pair this afternoon. Now, where have you come from? We've come from Broxbourne in Hertfordshire. Broxbourne in Hertfordshire. And how do you know each other? Uh, we've been together for seven years and married for three years. Oh, many congratulations. Many congratulations. Nicola, what do you do? I work in personnel for college in Epping. In Epping. Very good. And Dean, how about you? I'm a train driver. Train driver? Yeah. Have you, have you wanted to be a train driver ever since you were little? Yeah, it's every small boy's dream. Yeah. Isn't it? Do, do you get to wear a hat? Unfortunately not. Oh, it's just too <laughs> upsetting. No hat. I when did train drivers stop wearing out. hats? In the 19th century. <laughs> so what's the route you drive? Um, from London Liverpool Street to Hartford East, Cambridge, Stetson Airport and Chingford. That's just fantastic. Yeah. That's just fantastic. I know that route well. I've been on that train. Yeah, so have yeah, I. That You're on that train all the time. A little bit bumpy last time I was on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, little when bit. I did it, I was beautifully driven. <laughs> Thank you. Beautifully smooth. Oh, some of those junctions, I wouldn't have known they were there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Very best of luck to the pair of you. Great to have you here. You. And next, we welcome Helen and Glyn. Now, how do you two know each other? We met in Newcastle 15, 14, 15 years ago. I asked Helen if she would like to have a cup of coffee with me, and she kindly said yes. And two years later, we married, and we've been happily married ever since. That's fantastic. Glyn, what do you do? I'm a retired train driver. <laughs> And I don't have a hat. Did you ever wear a hat? <laughs> no, never. And what was your route? Uh, I was on all the northeast, the metro system and such like. And how about you, Helen? What, what do you do? I'm a retired caterer. Retired caterer. And what, what sort of things did you cater? Everything, I suppose. Everything. I can't yeah. imagine a caterer Everything. saying, no, we don't, cater, we don't <laughs> cater for those. No, no. No, I can bring things up, but not for that. No. And uh, Helen, what are you hoping might come up this afternoon? Cookery, food and drink. Cookery, food and drink. That uh, would play films, right into your hands. Cinema, films. Yeah. And uh, Glyn, how about you? What would be a great subject for you? 50s and 60s music. Geography. OK, but metro stops, for example, oh, would all be right them, up yeah, your all street. Yeah, all the way around the system. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's lovely having you here. Very best of luck to the pair Thank of you. you. Thank and you. next, we welcome back Sue and Anne. This is your second time on Pointless. Everyone gets two chances to reach our final. This is your last chance. Remind us what happened last time. We were quite unlucky to lose out, but um, unfortunately, we were just pipped. You were, well, by it was a point. Prime, prime Ministers of Israel. <laughs> yes. That was a tough one, Richard. Well, do you want metro stops? <laughs> yes! <laughs> OK, if that's, what ev if that's what everybody wants. Metro we'll stops. We'll do metro stops. Uh, well, it's brilliant having you here. Uh, welcome <laughs> back. And I have high hopes of you making it all the way through to the <laughs> final this time. Uh, and then, finally, we welcome Sarah and James. Now, how do you two know each other? Uh, Sarah's my elder sister. She was born, and then a couple of years later, I was born. I haven't done much else since. That's how it... Don't, 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 don't. You were born and just turned up here? Come on. <laughs> you must have done so... No, what, what do you do, James? Um, I'm a student physics teacher. Where do you do that? In Leeds. In Leeds. Sarah, what about you? I'm a solicitor. Your sister, whereabouts? In County Down, a little town called Downpatrick. Downpatrick in County Down, right. My God, how long have you been doing that for? I'm only recently qualified, so about a year. Wow, it's all very, very exciting, new practice there. And what do you like doing, Sarah, when you're not... when you're not soliciting? What? <laughs> <laughs> what was I about to say? <laughs> Sarah, what do you like to do when you're not being a solicitor? <clears throat> um, <laughs> I'm also the church organist at the church um, I grew up in, and I lead the choir there as well. Do you, is that, you take choir practice? Yeah. Friday evenings? Thursday evenings. Thursday evenings. <laughs> do you do an anthem on Sundays? We do. As yeah. well as all the hymns, make sure they're nice. Good, good. James, what about you? Are you musical as well? Uh, yes, I'm a percussionist. Oh, are you? Yes. Which what, uh, do you play this of the full array of percussion? Do you? Yes. Everything from uh, cymbals to side drums. Anything and you can hit with anything else. <laughs> with anything else. <laughs> very good indeed. Well, very best of luck to the pair of you. It's lovely having you here. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. There's only one more person left for me to introduce. When they were handing out obscurity, he got more than his fair share. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Handing out obscurity. Now I think about that, that's just a nonsense. Yeah, a lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the times when you introduce me, it's nonsense. Have it's you not spotted that so far? You're sort of climbing up a mountain of obscurity or yeah. swimming in a lake of obscurity. Oh, it's just, it's just... 
like an obscurity triathlete as far as you're concerned. Yeah. Uh, it should be a good show today. We've only got one returning pair that's Sue and Anne, but they got through to the head-to-head -head last time and did very, very well. So I think they're going to be tough to beat for our, for our newcomers. First time in pointless history that we've had 25% of our contestants qualified to drive a train. First time in history. 25%? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. There, Sorry. There you Matt, go. It's not my, not my strong suit. <laughs> Uh, and Helen, you'll be very pleased to hear the first round is about food. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> there we are. Second round about metro stops, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> OK, very good. Thanks so much, Richard. Well, we put all our questions to 100 people before this show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. Now, what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, Paul and Colin won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. There it is. OK, let's play Pointless. Now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Meat. <laughs> Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many types of sausage as they could, Richard. Yeah, you don't get this on other quiz shows, no. do you? No. All the correct answers in this round are types of cooked, cured or uncooked sausage or versed. All the incorrect answers will not be sausages at all. Sausages, essentially, is what we're talking about. <laughs> right. Dean and Nicola, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first. Now, in this round, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. Your first set of seven answers reads like this. Falukov, bologna, salami, merguez, or merguez, I'm guessing. <laughs> My guess is as good as yours, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Frankfurter, knackwurst, turia. I'll read those one more time. Falukov, bologna, salami, merguez, frankfurter, knackwurst, turia. OK, then I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but be very careful because at least one of those answers is incorrect. Pick an incorrect one and you will, of course, score the maximum of 100 points. Now then, Dean. Right. Dean, a sausage man? Not oh, really. you like a sausage, Dean, come on. <laughs> What's that list behind me looking like to you? A little bit confusing. Yeah. I think I'll go for the bottom one. Is it Turia? Turia. Yeah. Turia. What do you think that might be? Turia. I have no idea, but I it just... I saw it straight away and that went with it. I commend your bravery. I think that's brilliant. Let's hope that's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Turia. Oh, Dean! Unfortunately, oh. Turia is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. I'm sorry. Richard? Oh. Yeah, sorry, Dean. Turia is actually it's the name of a village in Serbia, which is the home, of course, as people at home will know, of the World Sausage Festival. <laughs> well, now, Helen, we are looking for types of sausage. What are you thinking about when you look down that board behind me? Are there any sausages leaping out at you? Knackwurst. Knackwurst. Yes. Knackwurst. Oh, That's how I've chosen to <laughs> pronounce it, but um, I, I could easily be wrong. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said knackwurst. It's right. And it's going a long way down. Look at that. Oh, very well done, Helen. That's wonderful. <laughs> the cracking score. Knackwurst. Two. Yeah, well played, Helen. Knackwurst comes from the German knacken, which means to make a cracking sound, which is what it does when you, when you bite into it, apparently. It sounds dreadful, doesn't it? <laughs> like most German sausages. A cracking Ooh. sound? Yeah. God, think how taut the skin must be. An explosion of processed pork in your mouth. <laughs> 
flavoured with cumin and parsley, in case you're interested. In the unlikely event you're interested in a Canuck first. <laughs> oh, I could do with a Canuck first now, couldn't you? <laughs> oh. Very well done, Helen. Two points. Thank you. And so, Sue, we come to you. I... Types of sausage. Do you like sausages? Not a lot, no. OK. OK. But I think I'll go for a load of old bologna. <laughs> a load of old bologna. There it is, second from the top. Bologna. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said bologna. Oh, wow! Not a load of old bologna. A pointless answer. It adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £1,250. And it scores you nothing. Very well done indeed. Richard. Yeah, bologna, another name for bologna sausage from, uh, from Bologna in Italy. And a pointless answer. Po who'd have thought? I guess people don't realise bologna is a sausage, maybe. Sarah. Sausages. Actually, I used to have a part-time job on a butchery counter in a supermarket. <laughs> this is just, this is just, all your Christmases Weirdly. have come at once, haven't they? <laughs> right, now, you are the last person to have this board, mm. so you are the perfect person to talk us through the sausages that remain. Well, I think I'd better stay, um, stay safe. Um, the only two I'm pretty sure are sausages, are salami and frankfurter. Um, I'm going to keep it safe and go for uh, salami. Salami. OK, I have a hunch that might be a sausage. Let's see how many people said salami. Not a bad score in the context by any means. 40. For salami. Yeah, a large Italian sausage of salami. And it's, it's a high score, but with Dean scoring 100, wasn't a bad tactic to go for. There's actually a couple more pointlesses up there, though. Let's take a look at the whole rest of the board. Frankfurter, obviously, is a, is a sausage that would have scored you 19. And the other two, Fadokorf and Merez, they're both pointless answers. We've got three pointless answers up there today. Very well done if you've got any of those three at home. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Brilliant, pointless answer with bologna there from Sue. And then we come up just to two points, appropriately, to our caterer, Helen. Then up to 40 for Sarah and James. And then Dean and Nicola, I'm sorry to say, way ahead on 100. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We're looking for types of sausage, in case you'd forgotten. Here they are, the second list. Cumberland, Savaloy, Longaniza, Abeneri, Saucisson, Feuchtwanger, Chorizo. I'll read those one more time. Cumberland, Savaloy, Longaniza, Abeneri, Saucisson, Feuchtwanger, Chorizo. <laughs> Guess which one of those I really like saying. <laughs> OK, again, I can tell you there is at least one pointless answer on that board and there is at least one incorrect answer amongst them, so try and avoid those. <sighs> James, then. James, James. Did you ever work behind the sausage counter at the I supermarket? I did not, no. Did you ever go to the sausage counter when Sarah was working there? Occasionally to buy a sausage roll. I'm not sure what type of sausage tends to go into a sausage roll. They role. tend not to like you to know. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I think I'm going to... Play relatively safe and hope it's enough to get through. And I'm going to go for chorizo. You're going to go for chorizo. Well, there's your red line. Below that red line, you're through. Let's see if chorizo is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said chorizo. Well done. You're through, James. Very well done. Oh, and down it goes. 14. That's a great score. Takes your total up to 54. Chorizo. Yeah, well played, James. You and Sarah have played it very safely and got yourself through uh, chorizo. It's a Spanish sausage, commonly flavoured with uh, paprika or red peppers. Thanks very much. Now then, Anne. Didn't Sue do well? She She's, did. Oh, it's a wonderful, a pointless answer I with know. bologna there. So I think, because we are, had got a pointless answer, I might go for something a bit obscure. Just because I like hearing you say it so much, I'm going to go for Feuchtwanger. You're going to go for Feuchtwanger. Yes. Feuchtwanger. 
See, if my sister worked behind the sausage counter, I'd be in there asking for Feuchtwanger <laughs> every day. <laughs> OK, Feuchtwanger, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Feuchtwanger. There's your red line just below the pink one. Oh! I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Yeah, unlucky, Anne. Uh, Feuchtwanger is the, it's the surname of Antoine Feuchtwanger, who's a German who many people claim is the inventor of the hot dog. He was a sausage seller in Missouri in the late 19th century, and the sausages were so hot he would always sell them with gloves. So he'd buy them and he'd give you a glove, but people kept taking the glove away, so he was losing a lot of money. So he and his wife went to a local baker and got buns made for the sausages, and that's where the hot dog was born, so they say. Antoine Feuchtwanger. <laughs> right, so then, Glyn and Helen. Remember, we are looking for types of sausage. You are on two. Great answer from Helen in the first pass. The high scorers remain Nicola and Dean and Anne and Sue. So if you can score 97 or less with your answer, you are through. You are home and dry. Well, I, I, I think I know three up there already, apart from the chorizo. Uh, but I'm going to play a little bit safe here and pick the train driver sausage, the Savaloy. <laughs> the Savaloy? Yes. The sausage of train drivers. <laughs> OK, Savaloy. There is your red line. If you're below that red line, you are through to the next round. Savaloy, is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? Well done, you're through. Very good. Only five points for the Savaloy, taking your total up to seven. So Savaloy, only five points. Yeah, very, you? very, very low score. The train driver sausage, as you say, it got its name. It gets its name from the French uh, Sevelath, which is uh, because they used to make it with brains. It used to contain brains. The Savaloy. Now, then, Nicola. Normally, I'd say you can talk us through the board, but there is more than a, a, an even chance that we might have a we might have a tie here. So don't talk us through the board. No. I'd like you just to pick a sausage. Have you got your eye on one? I have. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's abeneri. Is that right? Abeneri. Do you know, I had no abeneri. idea either. Now you ask. <laughs> OK, well, you are the joint highest scorers, so there's no red line for you. Let us see if abeneri... I mean, it's great if abeneri is a pointless answer. It'll add 250 quid to the jackpot, and there'll be an exciting tie. Always like a tie. Abeniri, how many people said it? Is it right? <laughs> oh, no, bad luck, Nicola. Oh, unfortunately, Abeniri is not a sausage, which means I'm afraid you score the maximum of 100 points again, taking your total up to an impressive 200 <laughs> points. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Nicola, you had to go for an obscure yeah. one, so uh, it's worth doing this. Daniel Abenieri was an actor who played Frank N. Furter in the British tour of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I'm afraid. Uh, there was a pointless answer up there, though, that uh, would have got you a tie, and that's, that is saucisson, which is not only the French word for sausage, but actually a, a dry French sausage itself. That was the answer that would have tied it for you. Well done if you said saucisson at home. Let's fill in the rest of the board, though. Cumberland sausage, of course, uh, but would have been a fairly high scorer, would have got you 46 points. And a long ganitza would have scored you one point. So, again, a very good answer. Well done if you got that. Thanks very much, Richard. So, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, it is Dean and Nicola. I'm so sorry. You've gone out in a blaze of glory, though. <laughs> it's the only way to do it. We will see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. Meanwhile, thanks very much for playing. Lovely conductor. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but of the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one of you is going to be leaving at the end of this round. OK, the category for round two this afternoon is... Education. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, our round two question concerns... Locations of British colleges and universities. Uh, yeah, we're going to show you a list of colleges and universities. We asked 100 people in which UK town or city are all of these based. We're going to show you six on each pass. The more obscure answer is going to score you fewer points. If you give us an incorrect answer, though, you'll score 100 points. Now, remember, we are looking for the UK towns and cities in which these colleges or universities are located. And we have got Northumbria University, University of East Anglia, Queen's University, Harriet Watt University, Sydney Sussex College, Aston University. 
I'll read those one more time. Northumbria University, University of East Anglia, Queen's University, Harriet Watt University, Sydney Sussex College, Aston University. Okay, and remember, we are looking for the UK towns and cities in which these colleges and universities are located. Now, as always on Pointless, you are looking for the answer that the fewest of our 100 people knew. So, Glyn, it falls to you to get the ball rolling in this round. What's that yes, list look like to you? I, I know about three, I would say. I know about three, but I'm, I'm going to play it safe and I, I'm going to go for Northumbria University. Northumbria University, yep. which is located... In Newcastle. In Newcastle. OK, Northumbria in Newcastle. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. It's right. Twenty-four. Not a bad score, Glyn. Northumbria, Richard. Yeah, that fell very nicely for you, Glyn, didn't it? It, it did. was a, the former Newcastle Polytechnic, became yes. a university in 1992. So, Anne, we come to you. Yes. Um, there's only one I know for sure, so I'm going to say that. And that's Aston University, which is Birmingham. Aston, Birmingham. Very good. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Aston, Birmingham. It's right. 58. Ooh, that's a high score. Aston, 58. Uh, yeah, big score, but a correct answer. So, now then, Sarah. Now, remember, we are looking for the UK towns and cities in which these colleges and universities are located. You're the last person to have this board, so talk us through all the answers there, if you'd like. Well, I know one for definite, because uh, I, I went there. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the Queen's University of Belfast. And I have a feeling Harriet Watt might... Scotland somewhere, possibly Edinburgh, and the others I wouldn't be sure of. Um, so I'll have to go for Queen's University of Belfast. Queen's Belfast, you are saying. There it is, third down. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that. Queen's University, Belfast. 16. That's a great answer, Sarah. Very well done. 16 for Queen's Belfast. Uh, yeah, opened in 1849 as Queen's College Belfast, and famous students include Seamus Heaney, Liam Neeson and Sarah. <laughs> Fortunately for you. Uh, let's take a look through the, the rest of them. Uh, University of East Anglia, which nobody went for, that is in Norwich. That would have scored you a fairly hefty 42 points. Harriet Watt, you're quite right, it's in Scotland. In fact, it's in Edinburgh. That would have scored you 17. And Sydney Sussex uh, College, it's the best answer on the board, would have scored you just eight points. And it's in Cambridge. Very well done if you said that at home. Sydney Sussex College, Cambridge. Thank you very much. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Queen's University Belfast stood you in excellent stead, Sarah, scoring you a lovely, impressive low 16. Then up to Glynn for Northumbria on 24. And then Anne. Wow, that was an expensive. Aston University, who'd have known? It was so well known. Well, Sue, you're going to have to pull it out of the bag in this next pass. Uh, very best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more universities and colleges on the board, and here they are. We have got Somerville College, University of Surrey, University of the West of England, LSE, University of Wales Institute, Teesside University. I'll read those one more time. Somerville College, University of Surrey, University of the West of England, LSE, University of Wales Institute, Teesside University. Now remember we are looking for the UK towns and cities in which these colleges and universities are located. And obviously you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. James, you are the low scorers on 16, the high scorers are Sue and Anne on 58. If you can score 41 or less with your answer, you are through to the next round. Yeah, I was rather hoping Queen's might have come up on my pass, but it hasn't, obviously. And I, I can honestly say I'm not sure of any of them, but I can probably take a guess at a couple. And because I believe Middlesbrough is sometimes referred to as Teesside, I'm not even sure of that, but I think it maybe is. I'm going to have to say Teesside University, Middlesbrough. Teesside University, Middlesbrough. I can't fault your reasoning at all. There is your red line. Below that red line, through to the head-to-head. -head. Best of luck. Teesside, Middlesbrough, James is saying. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Very well done, James. And you're in the head-to-head. -head. Look at that. 
27 for Teesside. Brilliant. That takes your total up to 43. Richard. Yeah, very well played, James. The tees flow through Middlesbrough's Teesside University. And uh, very, very good partnership with your sister there. It's both rounds now just solidly got through. So, Sue. Now, remember, we are looking for the UK towns and cities in which these colleges and universities are located. I can't risk guessing any of them because there's only one that I think is right, which is going to be high, but I'm going to say LSE in London. LSE London is what you are going to say. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said LSE London. It's correct. 55. Wow, it scored... It scored lower than Aston Birmingham. <laughs> but that takes your total up to 113. Richard? Uh, yeah, big score, but better than 100. Formed in 1895, the London School of Economics. Formed by members of the Fabian Society, including George Bernard Shaw. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Helen. The high scorers are Sue and Anne still on 113. If you can score 88 or less with your answer, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, talk us through the board, Helen. Well, the two that I knew have gone. This could be good news and for Sue and <laughs> And I'm not sure of any of the rest. Um, I'll try the uh, University of Wales Institute, Cardiff. Cardiff, University of Wales Institute, Cardiff, you are saying. Is that a guess? Yes, very much. Very much. Well... Good luck with it. There's your red line. Below that red line, and University of Wales Institute in Cardiff has got you through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if that is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right, and you are through to the head-to-head, -head, Helen. Well done. Very good indeed. 41, that scores, takes your total up to 65. Well, Richard. Yeah, very well done, Helen. It's a very smart guess to make at the end of the round there. It's in Cardiff. It's been there in various forms since 1865. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of the answers on the board, though, see how well you did at home. There's the University of West of England. That's in Bristol. Would have scored you 17 points. Somerville College is in Oxford. That would have scored you 13. And the best answer on the board up there is the University of Surrey. Do you know where the University of Surrey is? Anyone want to hazard a guess? Guildford. Guildford, exactly right. Would have scored you eight points, though, so very well done if you got that. Thank you very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, it's Sue and Anne. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Aston oh. Birmingham. That was the most expensive <laughs> answer you could have given. I thought that was going to be quite, quite a low scorer for you. Don't mind. Well, sorry to be having to say goodbye to you at this stage, but uh, lovely to have had you on the show. Thanks so much for playing. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Very well done, Helen and Glyn, Sarah and James, you made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to our final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £1,250. <laughs> now, you're going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The first pair to get to the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Madonna films as they could. We're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which Madonna has received an acting credit prior to April 2011. Uh, as always, short films, TV films, documentaries or things where she played herself don't count. Uh, she also made an uncredited appearance in Die Another Day, so we won't accept that. But any film for which Madonna has received an acting credit. Very best of luck. Yeah, very best of luck. Now then, Helen and Glyn, because you've played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. We are looking for Madonna films. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yes. What are you going to say? I'm going to say Evita. Evita? Yes. Very good. Evita. Sarah and James. We only had Evita. Yeah. 
Right, we're just gonna choose one of her songs and hope that it's also the title of a film she was in. Is it even one of her songs? Is it? Right. We're gonna say... It's looking brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? We're gonna say Material Girl. Material Girl. We have Evita, we have Material Girl. Helen and Glynn have gone for Evita. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Evita. It's right. 43. 43 for Evita. Sarah and James are taking a bit of a stab in the dark. Material Girl. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Material Girl. No. Bad luck. I don't think you're too surprised by that, are you? No. Material Girl, I'm afraid, is an incorrect answer, which means after the first question, Helen and Glynn are in the lead 1 0. Richard. Yeah, it'd be a good name for a film, Material Girls. A good guess. There is a Material Girls, but uh, not, not a Madonna film. It will not surprise you to know there are an awful lot of uh, pointless Madonna films. Let's take a look at some of them. Vision Quest uh, as pointless Madonna films. Shadows and Fog, the Woody Allen film, she was in that. Uh, Dangerous Game, Blue in the Face, she was in that. It's actually a rather good film. Arthur and the Invisibles, the Luke Besson film, she was a uh, voiceover artist on that. Uh, Certain Sacrifice, so that would have scored you one point. Uh, Bloodhounds of Broadway, that's also one point. Girl, a six, that's two points. Four rooms, I'll just call you three points. Next best thing, four, swept away six. Body of evidence, eight. Just that, if we leave that page up for a second as well, that's also the worst possible weekend you could have watching those films. <laughs> imagine that, imagine a, D, a DVD marathon of that. <laughs> oh, you'd want to be swept away. Let's take a look at the uh, more famous of our films. I was going to say popular, but that would be pushing it. Shanghai Surprise with eight. League of Their Own, she was in uh, 13. Again, quite a good film. She was rubbish, in it? Dick Tracy, 16. Uh, Who's That Girl, 18. Desperately Seeking Susan, 33. And Evita, right at the top of the pile with 43. Thanks very much, Richard. Here's your second question. Now then, Sarah and James, you have to win this question to stay in the game. You have to win it. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of the Travelling Wilburys as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the five musicians who were in the, uh, the super group, the Travelling Wilburys, who released two albums. That was Travelling Wilburys Volume 1 and then Travelling Wilburys Volume 3. The five people in that particular super group. OK, now, Sarah and James, this time you get to answer first. Right. <coughs> what are you going to say, James? I have a feeling that Paul McCartney might be in it, or was in it. OK, you're going to go for Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Helen and Glynn, members of the Travelling Wilburys. Have you done all your conferring? Yes. Thank you. Paul McCartney, in case you were wanting to say that, has oh, gone. We're, we're, we're going to change to another one. Roy Orbison. Roy Orbison. We have Paul McCartney, okay. we have Roy Orbison, Sarah and James. Paul McCartney, you are saying? Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Paul McCartney. Oh, bad luck, bad luck. I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer. Which means, Helen and Glynn, you were going to say Paul McCartney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was actually, yes. <laughs> Back to train Instead of which, you went for Roy Orbison. Yes. Let's see if it's right. At this stage, all it has to be is right. Doesn't matter what it goes down to. Roy Orbison, is it right? It is right! Helen and Glenn, you are through to the final. Good answer. 35 for Roy Orbison. Very, very good indeed. That means that after only two questions, Helen and Glynn are through in straight sets to the final. Richard. Yeah, well played, Helen and Glynn. There was a, an ex-Beatle in the Travelling Wilburys, but it was George Harrison. Uh, let's see if anybody at home got all five. I suspect some people did. Jeff Lynn would have scored you 14. Bob Dylan would have scored you 18. Uh, there's Tom Petty would have scored you 21. Uh, George Harrison would have got you 30, would have won you the point if you'd said George Harrison and Roy Orbison there right at the top with 35. Very well done if you got all five of them. Thank you very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head is Sarah and James. Dear, oh dear, but you've played fantastically well. You've, you've, you've played a, a sure and steady game right at the end of the line there um, and have come through every round fantastically, through to the head-to-head -head in your first appearance. This always bodes well for a, for a subsequent appearance, but... Uh, I'm sorry we have to say goodbye to you now, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much for playing. Great to <laughs>
But for Helen and Glyn, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £1,250. <laughs> Very well done. Congratulations, Helen and Glyn. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy, so very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,250. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of today. We've had one pointless answer on the show today. You only have to find one more, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options, and they are... Languages... Comic strip books, footballers. Comic strip books? Do you know anything about that? Footballers, yes, but it, it, it could be gone back there. 50s, 60s, I know footballers. Yeah. You'll have more chance foot... on comic strips, won't you? No, I won't. Uh, Dandy the Beano, the top of the Beezer. That might be that type of thing. Yeah, people that don't know, like uh, Roy of the Rovers and things like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I do want a chance footballers. It's up I to don't you. Know. No. Comic oh, strip books, books. We'll go over comic strip oh, books. Right. You've got a chance on yourself. Yeah. The comic strip books, please. Uh, OK, you're going to go for comic strip yes, books? Yes, yes. OK, well, let's find out what the question is. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Asterix books as they could. Asterix books. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the English language titles of any of the Asterix books published by Orion Publishing up to April 2011. So that's any of the Asterix books written by Albert Udezzo and René Goscinny up to April 2011. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £1,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. The only one I know, but right. and that kind of thing is Hegel, right. Hegel the Horrible, that's and that's in Comments Creek. Uh, that's the only one I know. Uh, in, in the newspapers. What's the other one? Some the Viking. Viking. Yeah. Right. Um, that's Hegel, isn't it? The Viking? No, there was another one with the Viking name. Aye. Right. Oh. With a different, different one. That's only... No. Oh. That's all. <laughs> this is definitely hard, yeah. But no, I, I, I can't think of it. I see that. Um, are these paper ones from the newspaper, such as that? I don't know. Strips. Strips. Comic strips. Well, you just have to wait. Here you go, and chance to do all the ones. Howard or Harold or something, just make up to. Oh, what do they call that? Vacant one? Vulcan the Vacant or something? Five yeah, seconds. Yeah. Just yeah. have to go for the transit, yeah? Yeah. yeah. OK, that's your time up. We were looking for Asterix books, and I now need three answers from you. Well, the only one um, that we could come up with was Hagar the Horrible. Hagar the Horrible. Yeah. And OK. I think there's one called Vulcan the Viking. Vulcan the Viking. Come go back to languages. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have Metro that... stops, if you like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd rather have that. Yeah. Wouldn't that just be uh, really well, lovely? I can't, I can't think of another one, can you? Rupert. Rupert. And Rupert. Yeah, okay, we'll try one. <laughs> OK. Not Rupert the bear. No. Rupert. It doesn't sound very astral. Just Rupert. Yeah. <laughs> just Rupert. OK, yeah. so we have Hagar the Horrible, we have Vulcan the Viking, we have Rupert. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Hagar. I think Hagar. We shall put Hagar the Horrible last. And should we put Rupert first, maybe? I think so, yeah. OK, yeah. we'll put yeah. him out. I think we'll get rid of him. Get him up front. <laughs> OK, let's put them up on the board in that order. And here they are. Rupert, Vulcan the Viking, and Hagar the Horrible. There they are. OK, well, we were looking for Asterix books. You said this was your least confident answer. Obviously, it has to be pointless if you're going to win that <laughs> £1,250 jackpot. It's going to happen one of these days. That the, the answer people make up standing over there is actually going to be a pointless, correct answer. Let's see if Rupert is that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert, is it right? How many people said Rupert? I think you expect, oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid that is, a, that is a, uh, not a pointless answer. Uh, so you only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. Now, £1,250, what would you do with it? 
We'd have a holiday. Holiday. Holiday, yes. Holidays. Yeah. yes. That's so what we do, get. holidays. Yeah. <laughs> one might take some of the family, if they behave. <laughs> Only to wave you off. <laughs> Help with the bags. And then... OK, well, we were looking for Asterix books. Your second choice, second answer, was Vulcan the Viking. Again, this has to be correct, and it has to be pointless. And if both of those things come to pass, you'll be leaving here with £1,250. <laughs> Let's see, Vulcan the Viking, is it right? How many people said it? No. Well, two out of three. Doing <laughs> two well. out of three. Yeah. Bad luck. Yeah. You only have one more chance to win today's jackpot of £1,250. We're looking for Asterix books. Hagar the Horrible. <sighs> Let's put it to the test. Hagar the Horrible it has to be correct, and it has to be pointless. Hagar the Horrible, is it right? How many people said it? Good luck. No. Oh. Three jackpots, eh? I've got a jackpot. Bad luck. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important, pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £1,250, which will roll over onto the next show. But you have been fantastic contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy, so well done. Oh, uh, so Richard. You've got to admire that consistency. You have. Guys, that really was. Hundred, 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 just like that. Solid as a rock. Uh, hey, got the horrible, obviously, is a cartoon strip, but nothing to do with Asterix. Vulcan the Viking. There's, a, there's an oil supply vessel called Vulcan the Viking, but not a, uh, not a comic strip book, I'm afraid. Rupert, obviously, it's Rupert Bear, whose middle name is famously The. But I know, <laughs> I know there'll be lots of Asterix fans at home and they'll be shouting things at the screen, so let's see if you've got any pointless answers, because uh, there's plenty of them, actually. Actually, Asterix and the Vikings was a pointless answer, so that's one you might have stumbled upon. Um. But let's take a look at some more of them. There's Asterix and Obelisk's Birthday, which was the, the 50th anniversary uh, book that came out very recently. Asterix and the Banquet, Asterix and the Big Fight. Those are all pointless. There's some more here. Uh, Asterix and the Chieftain's Shield, Asterix and the Great Crossing, uh, Asterix and the Laurel Reef, where they visit Rome to get Caesar's Laurel Reef, those are pointless. Just look at a couple more. Asterix and the Normans, Asterix the Gladiator, and the Mansions of the Gods, where they try and build a housing estate on the, the village of the Gauls. Very, very well done if you've got any of those at home. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Helen and Glyn. It's been fantastic having you on the show. Thank you both Thank you. so much for playing. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us next time, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.